Learning objectives include anaerobic respiration, how lipids and proteins are metabolized, uh, <clears throat> biochemical testing for microbial identification, and nutritional uh, classification of bacteria. Anaerobic respiration is where the final electron acceptor is inorganic substance other than oxygen. In aerobic respiration, we saw that oxygen was the final electron acceptor in that uh, electron transport chain. But if it is not oxygen, any other substance other than oxygen is the final electron acceptor, then the process is called anaerobic respiration. And those substances other than oxygen could be nitrate, as we see in nitrogen-fixing bacteria, uh, could be sulfate ions, as, as is uh, uh, there in the uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, uh, farming bacteria or producing bacteria, and carbonate ions uh, with uh, methane farming bacteria. As I mentioned earlier, that organisms like carbohydrates if they're present in the medium, but if they are not, then they can utilize proteins uh, also lipids. So this is how everything, these proteins and, and the lipids, they get channeled into this central pathway, which is uh, carbohydrate-driven, basically. So uh, they get converted into intermediate substances that then can get, in, and, uh, that, that can enter into the uh, metabolic pathway, the carbohydrate metabolic pathway. Here, those lipids can uh, enter at this level, at acetyl-CoA level. Similarly, proteins and amino acids can enter at this level. Amino acids can also enter at pyruvic acid level too. So there are, uh, I'm not going into any details here because you would study uh, in your biochemistry course, you know, in detail, all these metabolic, various metabolic pathways. So this is a, a kind of very overview, uh, brief overview of uh, uh, proteins, carbohydrate, and lipids. But ultimately, all these substances, including fat and proteins and carbohydrates, they can be uh, channeled into Krebs cycle, producing all these electrons, and electrons are needed to convert ADP to ATP, and ATP is used for various activities by the cell. Now, fermentation is a, is a process which sometimes is used for bacterial identification because fermentation is the ability of the organisms to produce um, end products by utilizing a pyruvic acid. These, if, let's say, there is a, a bacterium that has the ability or the enzyme to utilize pyruvic acid into lactic acid. So, and, and, and lactic acid or ethanol or methanol or, or other um, propionic acid, uh, acetic acid, and during that fermentation, let's say some gas is also in, uh, released, like maybe carbon dioxide, for example, is released. We can determine uh, this gas production as well as the acid production. Here is a tube which has a kind of pink color. This basically is a sugar-containing or small peptone, which is a medium for the growth of the bacterium. And when the sugar is utilized by the bacterium, let's say, into an acid uh, end product, which is an acid-based, we can detect the presence of acid by putting a pH indicator. So here in this case, um, this yellow color is a change in the pH indicator that we put here. When the medium was alkaline, for example, or neutral, the color was this. But then when uh, acid was produced by the bacterium, the color changed from pink or red to yellow. That indicates that there is acid production by this bacterium. And to detect gas, we put a, a tube, a small test tube within that, this uh, large uh, test tube, and it is uh, put inverted, uh, which is upside down. We fill this, this uh, small tube, which is called durum tube, with the same medium as this. And then we put, put it upside down. So any gas which is produced here, because gas is lighter in density, it would rise up and would be trapped here in this part of the tube. So as you can see here, uh, this is empty, showing this tube is empty, indicating that there is a gas present. So 
this bacterium is acid positive as well as gas positive. So this is one of the characters. Like these, uh, we can demonstrate ability of different organisms if they have those enzymes uh, that could utilize different pathways, and we can demonstrate those end products uh, by a test like this. Now, is the nutritional classification of bacteria. Bacteria, of course, need energy. If the energy source is a chemical, then these are called chemotrophs. And if the energy source is light, these are called phototrophs. And then bacteria also use carbon. If the carbon source is carbon dioxide, then this chemotroph would be called as chemoautotroph. So energy is derived from a chemical, which could be an inorganic molecule, or could be organic molecule, but mostly it is inorganic. And carbon source is from carbon dioxide, atmospheric, let's say, carbon dioxide. Then this organism could be grouped as chemoautotroph. But if the energy source is chemical and carbon source is another organic compound, then the organism would be classified as chemoautotroph. Similarly, if the organism utilizes light as energy source, we call that as phototroph. And then phototrophs, again, have two subdivisions. One is that if the carbon dioxide is used as a carbon source, then this is called photoautotroph. And if organic compound is used as a carbon source, then we call this as a photoheterotroph. Very briefly, photoautotrophs, they, of course, use light, as I mentioned earlier, and carbon dioxide as a source of carbon. They can use hydrogen atoms of water um, and reduce carbon dioxide during this process. And this is all what happens with the plants, and even some bacteria do that. So, as a result, they use carbon dioxide and convert that into oxygen. And this is the reason they're called oxygenic. Um, and examples include photosynthetic bacteria, algae, and some, uh, of course, all green plants. Photoautotrophs, on the other hand, they use energy from the light, of course. But like green bacteria, they are non-oxygenic. They don't, do not produce oxygen. Do not use hydrogen from water. They, they do not produce oxygen because they do not use hydrogen from water. They use hydrogen from other substances other than water, uh, like hydrogen sulfide or hydrogen gas to reduce carbon dioxide. So during this process, no oxygen is released. And they, of course, uh, they need total anaerobic conditions, means that they, the, uh, the presence of oxygen is not good for them for some reason. I mean, they, uh, oxygen is toxic to them, so they die probably. Photoheterotrophs uh, use light as a source of energy, use organic compounds as carbon source, and they can produce alcohol, fatty acids, and carbohydrates. Photoheterotrophs, on the other side, uh, they uh, are, some of them are anoxygenic, like uh, the example include rhodopseudomonas. The second category, major category, is chemoautotrophs. They use electron from inorganic compounds as energy source. They can use hydrogen sulfide, sulfur, ammonia, and hydrogen for capturing these electrons. And if they use carbon dioxide as a source of carbon, um, this is one example, thiobacillus uh, does that. And this is the major group, uh, chemoheterotrophs. Energy source and carbon source both usually are the same organic compound. And example is glucose. So glucose could be used as a source of electron as well as a source of carbon. Typically, uh, they use hydrogen atoms of organic compounds as electron sources, and they are the disease-causing organisms. Chemoheterotrophs. They are disease causing organisms. So, in summary, anaerobic respiration is that oxygen is not the electron carrier. 
Lipids and proteins can also be utilized as energy source by bacteria. And they all enter in a different or various points uh, or levels in the glycolysis or Krebs cycle. Microbes could be classified on the basis of nutritional requirements into um, autotrophs, uh, phototrophs, chemo, heterotrophs, chemo, autotrophs. 